Hi everyone and welcome to Exploring the Build. If you've just found this place, then welcome. And if you're returning, I'm glad to have you back. I'm Alex and this is my channel where we explore and theorycraft different character builds for Dungeons and Dragons. Today we are doing one of our quick builds where we'll be exploring a briefly summarized character build for D&D 5e. And as always with our quick builds, if there's ever a build you'd like to see me explore in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments below. The concept of our build today comes from David C. 9005, who asked to see a charisma leader slash fighter, basically a leader who can fight as well, but with the twist of not being a fighter bard. And that could just be a multi-class. I took it an extra step and assumed that this meant no levels in fighter or bard. We're gonna have to look for our fighter and leadership abilities somewhere else. Also, we're trying to see if there's something we can do with our background as part of the request. Now, right off the bat, there's two things. First off, yes, we absolutely can do something with our background. I will talk about that in character creation. And number two, a charisma leader who is also capable of fighting is kind of just a paladin. Before I roll credits on the build though, what if we actually tried to avoid just being a full level 20 paladin? Is there something else we could get here that actually makes us feel like a charisma leader who also has the ability to fight. I really like the Paladin's aura abilities as leadership abilities. For the sake of this video, I am saying that any leadership ability is basically a support ability that either buffs our allies in terms of defense or offense. And Paladins with their auras do get a lot of defensive buffs. They also have some spells that can be more offensive focused, such as Crusader's Mantle. Whether we're actually going to use that or not, we will see, but that's the idea that we're going for. And now the last thing to talk about before jumping into the build is that I did reach out again about whether this was 2014 or 2024 rules and which would be best to use for this build. Unfortunately, I didn't hear back in time, so I'm going to assume that we're sticking with 2014 rules since that's when the request was made. However, I will throw in a bit of a 2024 conversion at the end of the build in the summary. Now, without any further ado, let's jump into the build. Starting in character creation with our lineage, for this build, we are going to be a Warforged. No particular reason. For our background, we do have something we can use to, to actually help our leadership build. We want Knight of Salamnia. I've done a couple builds where we want to try and get this background, and it can be pretty easily reflavored, I would say, so that it fits with more settings beyond just Dragonlance but it is still technically a Dragonlance specific background, so there will need to probably be some buy-in from your DM to be able to get it for your character. But honestly, it is the best background that we can get for a leadership character because it gives us Squire of Salamnia as a free feat, which is the prerequisite we need for Knight of the Rose and Knight of the Crown, and those are the leadership feats we will for sure want to pick up later in the build. They will allow us to do rallies that can either command our allies to attack or bolster them and give them temporary hit points to help their defenses. Both of them are very much bread and butter abilities for our leadership characters. Finally, in terms of stats, technically we probably want to use the Tasha's Cauldron of Everything optional rules to redistribute the Warforged ability scores, but for the sake of this I will assume that we are not doing that and we're just going to go flat out with what the Warforged offers us and we're going to want the following stats. Strength is going to go to 16 after we put 9 points into it and a plus 1 from being a Warforged. We're going to put Dexterity to 9 just by putting 1 point into it. We're going to get Constitution to 14 by putting our plus 2 from being a Warforged, as well as 4 points to get it to 12, plus the 2 gets to 14. Intelligence we'll put 2 points into to get to 10. Wisdom we'll put 4 points into to get to 12. And then Charisma we're going to put 7 points into in order to get it to 14. Looking at the level breakdown of our character build now, overall we're going to end up being Paladin 8 and Sorcerer 12, or Paladin 12 and Sorcerer 8. Yes, we're going to be a Sorcerer in terms of our level breakdown, but we're not picking it because of the synergies that can help us with extra smites or things like that. What we want is the combination of support Sorcerer abilities as well as the auras that Paladins get. Now personally, for this build, I would start off as a Paladin at level 1 to gain proficiency in heavy armor. We would focus on being a more melee heavy 
fighter type character. If you wanted to be more caster focused though, starting sorcerer instead of paladin is going to give us proficiency in constitution saving throws, and we could flip around our strength and charisma scores in character creation to facilitate that a bit more. For the sake of this build, I'm going to start it as paladin, but then we're immediately jumping over to sorcerer. Sorcerer is going to get us a lot of good support abilities as we go clockwork soul sorcerer. We can get restore balance that can be reflavored as us shouting to our allies to either warn them of an incoming enemy attack or advise them on how to best attack an enemy in order to cancel out advantage or disadvantage on a d20 roll. I used attacks for the example, but it is any d20 roll that could include saving throws, ability checks, you name it. Another great leadership ability that the Clockwork Soul is going to get us is access to the Aid spell. Aid can scale quite nicely with Sorcerer levels, and it is a little mini mass heal or a buffer that we can cast at the start of the day in order to give our allies extra hit points. This will stack really nicely with temporary HP and damage reduction abilities that we'll get later in the build. Aid we get at Sorcerer 3, and immediately after we can go to Sorcerer 4 to pick up our first ability score improvement slash feat. And for this, I will 100% say we're grabbing Inspiring Leader. It is right in the name, this is our go-to leadership ability. Before I talk about it, I will say that if you wanted to scale a little bit better, just skipping it and going to Knight of the Crown or Knight of the Rose could be the better way to go but thematically, I think we need this feat for the build. All right, Inspiring Leader, and why is it our go-to leadership feat? Well, in terms of raw mechanics that we're gonna be using most of the time, it allows us to, at the start of the day, give out temporary hit points to our allies. And like I said, we can stack aid on top of that to really buff up our allies' durability. However, this is not the only thing that Inspiring Leader is good for. Inspiring Leader says that we can spend 10 minutes inspiring our companions to shore up their resolve in a fight. When we do so, we choose up to six friendly creatures that we can choose ourselves as well. They gain temporary hit points, and those allies cannot gain temporary hit points again until we finish a short or long rest. The thing is, though, there's no limit on how many groups of six creatures we use this on. The only limitation is the 10 minute time. What I'm getting at is, if you were going into one of those niche mass combat sessions, we can technically take quite a bit of time in order to inspire an entire army or at least a unit or even just a squad. Obviously, it does take a lot of time to perform, 10 minutes per every group of six, and that group of six needs to be within 30 feet of you. But the fact that you can constantly repeat it and buff the resolve of your allies is really what is going to make us thematically feel like a leader character. It is niche, yes, but when it works, it is going to be what makes us feel most like an actual leader. We'll feel like Theoden rallying the Riders of Rohan before the charge at Pelennor Fields, or we'll feel like Cap giving the Avengers a pep talk before finally ending on the words Avengers Assemble, or we'll feel like Optimus Prime delivering a final monologue as Linkin Park plays in the background. And that is why I picked Warforged. Once we have Inspiring Leader at Sorcerer 4 though, we'll hop back to Paladin for the next few levels. That way we can get up to extra attack so we can actually be more of a fighter. Until now, we'd probably be using like Booming Blade or Green Flame Blade coupled with Squire of Salamnia since that just lets us get advantage on a weapon attack. It doesn't have to be with the attack action. So that's a little bit of a nice combo. For our feats, we're going to want Knight of the Crown and Knight of the Rose next, no matter what. They can be in either order, but we definitely want each of those. Both of those abilities are half feats that do let you improve your constitution, so you could just improve that twice, or you can split the tree and use Knight of the Crown to improve your strength by plus one, and Knight of the Rose to improve charisma by plus one. Then, at a later point in time, we take an ability score improvement that just lets us improve both of those ability scores by one each in order to round them off. Yes, our scaling is god-awful, but there's not much we can do about it since we did start Warforged and we had to pick up Inspiring Leader and all that stuff. Before we had picked those up and finished them off, though, we do want our last few leadership abilities. These are our Paladin Auras, including Aura of Protection and hopefully a subclass Aura, as well as the Bastion of Law 6th level Clockwork Soul ability. 
Bastion of Law allows us to give out damage reduction to our allies and keep some for ourselves if we wanted to do that as well. Is it a good rate of exchange, one sorcery point for one d8 damage reduction? Probably not. We could use those sorcery points for meta magic and like quicken spell or extended spell and stuff like that. But the fact that we can do it is really what's going to help make us feel more like a leader to our allies in combat. We can help shore up our allies' defenses. It does take an action in order to give out that damage reduction, so we'd probably want to make it worth our while by giving out a few of the d8s worth of damage reduction. But once an ally has those Bastion of Law dice, they can choose when to use them. They don't have to use them on the next source of damage, which is a good bonus. Plus, we can offset the fact that it is an action to give out those dice by either using our Knight of the Crown or Knight of the Rose rally features as a bonus action. If we want more damage, we can use a bonus action to command one of our allies, perhaps a rogue, barbarian, or fellow paladin, to get an extra attack with their reaction. On the other hand, if we really wanted to boost our allies' defenses, we could use Knight of the Rose to give out some temporary hit points. You could give one ally the damage reduction and another ally the temporary hit points, or throw both of them on one ally who's just tanking a bunch of hits in the middle of the battlefield. That's also a very valid option. And it's really gonna come down to whatever you believe is the most tactically sound option at those moments in combat. Final thing to talk about is of course our Paladin Auras. So we can get this before we actually end the build, given that whether we're going Paladin 8, Sorcerer 12, or Paladin 12, Sorcerer 8, there's still a lot of levels after picking up both these features. And with those Paladin Auras, we're going to get Aura of Protection no matter what Paladin we pick, which is just a great defensive ability that can buff ourselves and our allies, so that's awesome. But we also probably want to choose a subclass that gives us another Paladin Aura. Obviously, the subclass should probably fit thematically with your character, but the options of subclasses that do give out an extra aura are Devotion, Redemption, Crown, Glory, Meh, Watchers, and Ancients. With special mentions, of course, to Oath of Conquest and Oath Breaker, since they do give out auras, those auras are just more offensive focused and don't really buff your allies directly, whereas the other ones do. Of all these subclasses, pick your favorite and whatever you think would fit best with your take on a leadership type character. And other than that, that's the build. We come online pretty much fully at level 14, at least in terms of what I've talked about. Level 6 Clockwork Soul gets us everything we want from Clockwork Soul, including Bastion of Law, Aid, Restore Balance. Level 8 Paladin gets us our Paladin Aura abilities, which is really all we wanted from Paladin. But then, of course, going Paladin 8 gets us two ability score improvement slash feats, which when paired with the one from Sorcerer 4 gets us a third one. That's Inspiring Leader and our two Knight of features all come together to be a lot of leadership type abilities. If you wanted to improve upon that a little bit, at least in terms of the 2014 rules, going either Human Variant or Custom Lineage would allow us to get Inspiring Leader out of the way quicker since we could pick it up right away at character creation. We could hopefully still use Native Salamnia as our background, get Squire of Salamnia, and then our first two ability score improvements could be dedicated to Knight of the Crown and Knight of the Rose, and it, that just genuinely does help our scaling a little. In all honesty though, like I said, I went Warforged purely for the Optimus Prime theme slash meme. We're not really remaking Optimus, but honestly, I don't know of a more inspiring leader that can put their money where their mouth is and fight just as well as they can lead. Now, I did promise a 2024 conversion, so really quickly, let's look at that. Personally, I still like Clockwork Soul for their support-based abilities that can make us feel like a leader, reaching out to protect our allies through damage reduction, canceling advantage or disadvantage, anything like that. But in 2024, I actually would hesitate to go Paladin. The auras are still nice and we would end up losing them, but I think Warlock might end up giving us more overall. Specifically, Celestial Warlock. Celestial Warlock gives us Healing Light as well as eventually Celestial Resistance. Healing Light is just free extra healing we can use as a bonus action, so that would be a nice extra leadership ability. While Celestial Resistance works as a miniature inspiring leader, so we wouldn't need to actually pick up that feat unless we wanted to. It doesn't stack well with the feat, so I would say we would want one or the other, so pick your poison whether you would go further into Warlock to get Celestial Resistance, 
or go further into Sorcerer and pick up the Inspiring Leader feat still. If we were to go further into Warlock, we could actually improve our fighting skill by going Pact of the Blade and getting up to Devouring Blade as an invocation in order to attack three times with a weapon. We'd be on par with the number of attacks that a fighter could pull off, so that's pretty cool. And we wouldn't miss Smites too much since we could still pull out Eldritch Smite in order to have that on-demand Smite capability. We wouldn't need to worry about being restricted to our bonus action to Smite we can just use Eldritch Smite instead. Overall, I do think if you're playing in 2024, swapping Paladin for Warlock is really the way to go. It's sad that we miss out on the auras, but we get so many other good abilities that it can just help make the build feel tighter. And other than that, that is the build. Let me know what you thought of it or what you would add or change to get closer to the idea of a charisma leader slash fighter that doesn't use fighter or bard levels. And as always, thank you so much for coming on the journey with me, and I hope to see you in the next one.